should you learn how to code or not as a tester doesn't really matter what i'm going to suggest is that you should expand your options and capabilities so i'm going to cover some of my favorite books that you might choose to learn from in software testing we always have these debates about should you learn this should you learn that you must learn you this should learn how to code not you learn must, how learn how code. must learn how to code do not learn how to must not do this. ah now here's the thing i cannot tell you whether you should or should not learn how to automate or code or program because i already know how to do that i've spent the last 25 years <laughs> 25 years probably more as a professional software developer person Right, so I know how to code, I know how to test. And prior to that, when I was growing up, I learned how to code. That was what we did for fun. One of the first books I ever read in programming was this, How to Write Your Own Adventure Programs. Now this book's fantastic. <laughs> the skills that this teaches you, this is basically a book about um, text adventure games. Text adventure games are where you sit down in front of the game, you type in verbs like go north, go east, take the sword, hit troll, that kind of thing. Right, it's a very simple verb noun parser. Now, as a tester, does that remind you of anything? Well, to, it reminds me of a keyword driven automation approaches open page, type value, um, create customer, I don't know, like verb noun with a bunch of data. That's pretty much what keyword driven is. Not exactly sure when this came out, but this is where I started. This got me in writing text adventure games. Now, text adventure games are a, a useful thing to learn, but they lead on to keyword driven automation approaches. But text adventure games didn't come from just nowhere. One of the things that we've tried to do in IT for a long time is parse natural language, right? And that's one of the things we've tried to understand just as human beings. How do we parse natural language? It's this kind of thing. This is uh, Rediscover Grammar by David Crystal. David Crystal's grammar book's really good. Making sense of grammar, rediscovering grammar, really useful. So when people tell you, like, you should learn something, it's a case of, oh, so you're using a modal auxiliary verb to convince me of something you're and I could phrase that as providing an opinion or um, making a requirement this is grammar stuff right so we have to learn how to use this so we're not vulnerable to it but in here it shows linguistics and linguistics is about for computing terms building taking the words that we see and trying to build some sort of structure some sort of parsable structure that we can then use that's what text adventure games do but they control the structure text adventure games basically say we're looking for the verb, we're looking for the noun that it matches, we might look for adjectives, we'll take everything else as different variables, we'll parse it in some way and we'll understand it. And it simplifies language in order to really understand it. Now this stuff comes from our attempts at AI and um, writing compilers and interpreters. This is a great book. And I get to tell you whether you should learn to code or not, but having some understanding of the most fundamental books in computing i don't see how it can hurt you <laughs> I mean, it's got to offer you benefits this is a great book it's not the most it's not the easiest introduction to compilers and interpreters but it's one of the few that i've kept on my bookshelf because it's it's so in-depth it's so useful now one of the projects i did at university was writing an interpreter because it's easier for me to write an interpreter than a compiler text adventure game is an interpreter for a subset of natural language. A keyword driven automation tool is an interpreter for a domain specific language that we've decided on for automating testing. And we write an interpret for it so that when we read the file with the uh, commands in it, we then go off and execute them. It's an interpreter. It's not compiling it down into a, a, a program that something else is gonna run. We take the files, we interpret them, we do something on the back of them. My final year project was writing a COBOL interpreter. I wasn't a great programmer at this point, and um, I looked through the code in here, some of it is pretty dreadful, but I was good enough, right? I was good enough at coding to get an interpreter out, because an interpreter, whilst it seems like a really hard thing, and some of the books can make it look quite complicated, it's not really that hard. So this is a very simple 
book on compilers and interpreters. It's out of date, right? It's completely out of date now, but it's a very useful overview and introduction into the kind of things that you do when you're building compilers and interpreters. It doesn't have much code to help you, but it's a good overview, right? The reason this is really important from a testing perspective is that anyone who's read this will see in here that it covers uh, graph theory. And graphs are one of the fundamental constructs that we use when we're building interpreters because we essentially build a model of the sentence structures. We build a model of the flow of the application. We have to maintain a graph in memory when we're building up the variables and the code structures that we're interpreting from. You don't really have to do that with keyword driven because it's such a simple interpreter. It's pretty much, there's a command, do it. There's a command, do it. This is a variable. Okay, let's stick that in memory. There's a command using that variable. Okay, find the variable, then do the command. Like, it's pretty simple stuff. This book covers state transition diagrams. State transitions are a fundamental tool when writing compilers and interpreters. And if you really want to get into it in depth, this is a great book. Introduction to Automata Theory, Languages and Computation. It's a bit heavy, right? But it does cover um, state transitions, um, Turing machines, prediction machines in fair detail. And if you, one of the fundamental things here is if you ever want to do model-based testing or test automation from models or where you don't declare everything as a series of steps, you build a model and have some application parse that for you, like interpret your model and apply some heuristics that you built in to execute the application. That's really state transition diagram interpretation. So if you understand state transitions, you understand interpreters, you could build a model based testing tool um, fairly simply. That's what this thing hints at. Now, if you want examples, these are examples of text adventure games. Very simple. Um, most of these books, these Usborne books, you can find online on the Usborne site, so have a look at them. This is a great book if you want to understand how computer programs work and are interpreted. All the examples in this version are in Lisp, but it's very easy to understand and it describes basic computing structures in a very simple way, essentially. It looks at data types, basic computer science. This is a really useful book. But it requires study. You don't look at this and go, right, I can immediately apply this to my testing because you can't. But what you're doing is you're expanding your in your head um, how computer science works, options that are open to you for building code to support you in your testing. Um, I've shown you some of my favorite books, by the way. So I'm not saying you should. I'm saying that if you do read these books, you will expand your testing knowledge at a very um, technical level of how the techniques that underpin testing, so graph theory, set theory, that's all contained in here from a testing perspective. And um, this is fundamental book for my approach to testing, but it's probably because it ties in really well to the, the stuff that I'm interested in, because I'm really interested in compilers and interpreters and taking representations, abstract representations of things and turning them into something else, finding ways of modeling systems in simple ways and making something else traverse over it so that I don't have to, something else validate the model against the real system. That's something that is really interesting and that's something that's in all these books. I'm gonna try and list all these books in the, the video description. The Usborne books are free online. This one fundamentally shows you how to build a keyword driven interpreter. That's what this is. If you read this from a testing perspective, that is what this is. And it's well worth reading. If you want to get a little bit more information, pretty much any book on compilers and interpreters will help you understand them. But this one, um, I used a lot when I was at university. Say you didn't want to do any of the, the coding stuff. An understanding of grammar and how we communicate and the words that we use and the states that they can trigger in people is enormously important because that will help hopefully save you or allow you to save yourself when you encounter things like testers should learn how to code. Testers should not learn how to code. It's important that we try and work out why. What would happen if we did? How can I, if I want to, and make those decisions? And I've given you some of the books that I've used and some of the approaches I have. And I'm trying to convince you that you need to prioritize on the path that you're on at the moment. If you're on a testing path, I thoroughly recommend 
testing path style books. But these are very technical testing path style books and they relate to the language and they relate to the techniques we use and the um, computer science underpinnings for those techniques. When you start moving into wanting to automate things, these are classic books and they have aged well. They still stand up today. They're still incredibly useful. And you can find books that show you how to build, build interpreters in whichever language you choose to build. And you don't need to be a great programmer to build an interpreter. You can build a really bad interpreter, still get a degree, even if you don't know how to program particularly well, right? This isn't a hard subject to implement. It's a <laughs> it can be a complicated subject to study. And you'll find a lot of these books online if you search for them. You can buy them secondhand. It doesn't have to be expensive. Usborne ones are free. Thing is, there's so much incredibly good stuff out there in the world of programming and computer science that I get nervous when people hear someone talking about whether you should or should not do something, particularly when the people saying that you should not do something or you don't need to learn how to do something already know how to do that because they already have the benefits of the experience and the knowledge that studying those subjects has given them. So I'm going to tell you, I have had enormous benefit from learning how to code and from studying compilers and interpreters and state transition diagrams and models and how we design software because all of that allows me to test systems, to understand what a system is and to automate those systems in different ways. And the ability to code allows me to do that more flexibly without having to rely on someone else's uh, framework or someone else's set of abstraction layers. I just have so much more flexibility and that is what I would love for you to develop. Develop your flexibility, your requisite variety. Prioritize on the path that you have and ignore topics if they don't fit into that immediately. But don't rule them out because you are told that testers should or should not code or should or should not be involved in test automation or should or should not learn technical skills or whatever. Make up your own mind.